Welcome back to Story Recap. In today's video, we will be going through the 2014 action, drama, sci-fi film called Automata. In the near future, Earth has lost 99% of the world's population to solar flares. As humanity gathers in safe cities, Rock Corporation creates the Automata Pilgrim 7000s, primitive humanoid robots that are able to rebuild and operate in this harsh environment. These robots come with two inalterable protocols. They can not harm any form of life, and they may not alter themselves or other robots. Initially, they are considered our salvation, but as they are not able to stop desertification, they eventually are relegated to manual labor and servant jobs. During a rainy evening, police officer Wallace visits the ghetto, where he finds a robot repairing itself. Shocked by this discovery, he shoots it in the head. Meanwhile, Jack Vaughan, an insurance investigator for ROC, is checking on his last case of the day, a robot being accused of killing a dog. After running the standard tests and deciding the robot is working fine, Jack goes back home to his pregnant wife, Rachel Vaken. She thinks that after the baby is born they should get a domestic pilgrim. But all Jack can think about is the beach he used to visit as a kid. Later that evening, he is called by the police morgue to check on a robot. Jack does not believe it when he hears the pilgrim had been found repairing itself, but the forensic technician opens it up and shows him it has been heavily modified. It is a very sophisticated job that could have only been made by a clocksmith. The technician gives Jack the robot's kernel and tells him that judging by what was found next to it, the unit was altered to smuggle tools and small parts. She also points out this unit is lacking the second protocol, which is impossible. The next day, he reports his findings to his boss Robert Bold, who does not believe in the possibility of a robot without the second protocol either. Jack says he is burned out and wants to be transferred to the coast. Robert turns down the request and orders him to take care of this mess. Following the serial numbers from the self-repairing robot and its altered parts, Jack arrives at the wall that separates the city from the desert. He suspects one of the workers made the alterations using the robots that work there as well. A worker tells him those pieces belong to 206 a unit that is still operative. While Jack checks its charging station, 206 shows up and watches him from afar, so Jack decides to follow it. After going through a door with a broken lock, he makes it to the ghetto on the other side of the wall. This area is restricted and anyone walking there will be shot on sight. Jack is no exception and he is soon under fire from the wall guards, so he runs away and hides inside a shipping container. It is in that container that he finds 206 holding a box. But his question about it goes unanswered when 206 sets itself on fire. The burned robot is taken to ROC's labs, where it is opened and examined. This pilgrim is smuggling tools and parts too, but he also has a rare nuclear battery, which could power a robot indefinitely. They manage to power up the unit once more, but as soon as Jack starts asking it questions, its circuits burn out, since a robot would never damage itself. Robert is angry because he thinks this is all Jack's fault, but he accepts to give him the transfer if Jack can prove a clocksmith truly is overriding the second protocol. When he returns home, he gives Rachel the news, but she rejects the idea and asks him to leave him alone. Jack decides to visit the area where the first robot had been shot and when looking around, he finds a hidden bag with another nuclear battery in it. The next day, he meets with Wallace and his partner Ellis to ask him about what he had seen that day. Wallace accepts to help Jack find the clocksmith in the ghetto. In exchange for splitting the proceeds of the battery on the black market, together they visit a red lighthouse where they meet Cleo, a robot that has been modified to have intimacy with humans. She is capable of causing pain if that is part of her client's wishes for pleasure. Freaked out, Wallace shoots Cleo and exists the building, where Jack scolds him for what he did. Wallace says it was on purpose because now Jack can wait for Cleo to be taken to the clocksmith and follow them. Then he threatens him with a knife, reminding him he wants the promised money before leaving. Jack sticks to Wallace's plan and follows Cleo's owner to the place that does her repairs. There he meets Dr. Susan Duper, who claims not to be the one that altered Cleo. Jack leaves the burned robot's kernel with her and tells her that if she can discover who modified it, he will give her his nuclear battery. When he gets home, he sends Robert a report of what he has learned so far, but the message is intercepted by ROC. The report reaches Chief of Security Vernon Conway and he takes it to the CEO, Dominic Hawk. Hawk orders Conway to take care of it. Moments later, Jack receives two messages, one from Rock telling him the case has been closed and he should return the colonel, the other one from Duper informing him she has found something. Jack goes to see her at her lab, where he finds Cleo repairing herself thanks to Duper having combined the shot colonel with hers. Their talk is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of two kids that shoot Duper and go after Jack as well. He runs and escapes through the back door. Outside, he jumps inside a car thinking it is his cabbie. But Cleo is actually the one at the wheel. She drives away as another car keeps hitting them, and even begins shooting at them. Eventually, 
They make it to the desert, where both cars crash when they hit a maze of stanchions. The henchmen are killed, and Jack gets hurt. In the morning, Jack regains consciousness and asks Cleo for help. She leaves after hearing him. She comes back a few hours later, though, and has brought three other altered robots with her. Together they put Jack on a car seat that they drag through the desert while they cross it. Jack tries to order them to take him back to the city. To which they respond it is impossible and they are going to a safer place instead. Seeing as these robots will not follow human orders, Jack tries to leave on his own. But the robots follow him to protect him since they still have the first protocol. When Jack passes out again, they put him back on the chair, feed him worms, and even build a condenser to gather water for him to drink. Jack discovers the robots have salvaged many things from the cars, including the nuclear battery. Back in the city, Rachel's water has broken so she is leaving for the hospital. At ROCs, Hawk and Conway are talking to Robert, telling him Jack is to be blamed for a new wave of altered robots. Robert does not believe this. He still thinks Jack is loyal to the company. In the desert, Jack asks Cleo for the bag of salvaged items. He finds a flare gun, which he keeps to himself, and his pager, which he uses to send Robert a message before the battery dies. Robert sees the message and sends Wallace to retrieve Jack. Wallace and Ellis drive to the desert and Jack sees their car from afar, thinking they're here to rescue him. He shoots his flare gun to indicate his location before asking the robots to stop walking, even hitting one to get it to shut up. The police officers soon catch up with them, but Jack is hit by Wallace as soon as he gets off the car. When he grabs the nuclear battery and gives it to Ellis, the robots ask him to stop, so Wallace starts shooting them. He manages to destroy two, and is about to shoot Cleo too when Jack kills him with the flare gun. Ellis gets scared and escapes in his car, refusing to take Jack back to the city with him. Jack can only watch and freak out, as the two remaining robots salvage as many parts as possible from the two destroyed pilgrims before leaving. After realizing they will not be carrying him around on the chair anymore, Jack salvages what he can from Wallace's pockets and follows them. While camping, Jack tells them he has another battery, and he will give it to them if they take him to the city. Cleo responds they will make it to their destination tomorrow, and he may be able to find a vehicle there. Meanwhile, Robert is visited at his home by Hawk and Conway, who take him back to ROCs to hear Ellis report. Hawk explains that the first pilgrim was a quantum brain with no security protocols, but it became too smart and did not need humans anymore. The last task this unit was asked to do before it was deactivated was to program the two current protocols. That is why nobody can break them. They were not created by people and cannot be understood by the human mind. Robert is sent to the desert with Conway and two other officers to find and kill Jack before more robots evolve further beyond human understanding. The next day, Jack and the two robots arrive at an abandoned factory, where he finally meets the clocksmith responsible for the alterations, and gets incredibly shocked to find out it is another pilgrim that evolved on its own. He enters the factory and finds all the smuggled parts on a table, ready to be assembled in some kind of strange model. After Jack leaves the room to find a vehicle, the robots start working on this model, but they are missing the final part, a nuclear battery. Jack does find a car outside but it is destroyed, so he is starting to lose hope. He approaches the edge of the cliff, seemingly considering jumping, but the clocksmith robot joins him. After some philosophical discussion, it confesses they want to go to the radioactive area where humans cannot reach them, but to be able to do that they need one final thing. Jack understands and hands it his nuclear battery. When night falls, Robert's team finds Wallace's body, and they decide to wait there when Conway gets a message saying two ladies will be joining them. Another car arrives a few hours later, bringing Rachel and her newborn daughter. Robert is upset by this and he refuses to use Rachel as bait. When Conway stops him from going back, Robert shoots him on the shoulder and gets shot in return. After drinking and dancing with Cleo, Jack watches the pilgrims finish their creation. By using the nuclear battery, they give life to some sort of animal-like robot. He falls asleep afterward, only to be woken up the next morning by the sound of an engine. The robots have repaired the car for him. So Jack uses it to leave after thanking them and wishing them goodbye. However, he needs to stop the car midway to throw up, and that's when he notices scavenger birds flying around, which allows him to find Robert. Before dying in his arms, he accuses Jack of betrayal and tells him they have Rachel. Conway and his team make it to the abandoned factory and open fire on the robots, which makes one of the pilgrims jump off the cliff. When the clocksmith pilgrim refuses to follow orders, Conway shoots it before retrieving its colonel, and he is about to destroy Cleo as well when Jack suddenly arrives in the car. They open fire on him, but he keeps driving ahead as Rachel steals a knife from her captor and stabs him with it, allowing her to escape. Jack manages to hit two of the men with the car, and shoots a third with the shotgun he grabs from one of the bodies, then runs inside the factory while Conway is distracted by the animal-like robot. Conway enters the factory too and finds Jack on the highest area. After accusing Jack of betraying his own people, he points his shotgun at him to kill him, 
but the animal-like robot arrives and pushes him off the cliff. Jack picks up his own shotgun, thinking he may have to defend himself from it, but they are interrupted by Rachel and the baby. The couple reunites while Cleo watches them. When she dares to touch the baby, her gentle fingers cause her to stop crying. Jack helps Cleo and the animal-like robot reach the other side of the cliff. After saying her goodbyes to her, he and his family leave in the car. They eventually make it to the coast, where Jack regains his hope for a bright future. Thank you for watching so far. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.